Today we got to see the second domain of CISSP that is asset security. So let's begin. What is an asset? It can be anything which is valuable to the organization like data, people, infrastructure, hardware. Asset security involves securing all the assets, but here we will be more focusing on the data security. It includes securing the hardware that stores or processes the data as well as defining the responsibilities of the people who interact with the data. The first step in data security is data classification. Data classification can be done based on the values or the importance of the data. Government and non-government agencies use different type of labels. Like government uses top secret, secret, confidential and classified. Top secret is the most critical data to the government like defense strategies. If it is not secure, it can lead to the compromise of national security. Whereas the non-government and private organization use something like confidential, private, sensitive, public. Confidential is the most important to the private organization like blueprint of the product, whereas the public is available for everyone. Now some of the organization uses a format of classes. Like class 3 is the most critical data, whereas the class 0 is the least important data. Now the data other than unclassified, class 0 and public can be called as a sensitive data. Sensitive data can be in different modes. These modes are called as data states. Data can be in following three states, at rest, in motion or in use. At rest means data which is stored. It can be stored in hard disk, flash drive, database, server. In motion means data which is moving while we download a file, copying a file or doing network communication like using messenger or email. In use means data which is in process, running application using a data or data which is in the RAM or data processed by the CPU. Now for data security we have to make sure that we protect the data in all three states. To protect the data at rest we can use the controls like file database or disk encryption, digital write management to enable the access control, data leak prevention to prevent the unauthorized activities on the stored data, cloud security broker to protect the data which is stored on the cloud, mobile device management to protect the data which is stored in the mobile device. To protect the data in motion we can use the controls like email encryption, encrypted communication by using SSH, TLS, manage file transfer to securely transfer the file DRM to enable the access and privilege control, DLP to prevent moving sensitive data out of the premises based on label metadata and content, CASB work as the same as the DLP but to protect the data which is on the cloud. To protect the data in use, we can use the controls like memory encryption, role based access control DRM, confidential computing in which the computing data kept in encrypted format outside the CPU, homomorphic encryption in which the calculation performed on the encrypted data without decrypting it. Selection of these controls also influenced by various standards, laws and regulations. Some of these are PCI DSS, HIPAA, NIST specific publication 853, GDPR. PCI DSS gives the control to protect the cardholder information, HIPAA to protect the personal health information, NIST gives the various security controls. Among these, there is a security control baseline, which is the minimum control required by the organization. GDPR protects the privacy and personal identifiable information of European citizen. Now we know that security control baseline is the minimum requirement. But it cannot be used exactly the same by all type of organization. So the organization use something like scoping and tailoring. In scoping, they select specific control as per their need, and in tailoring, they modify the control as per their requirement. Now these standard and regulation also create different roles. These are called data roles. Like NIST have mentioned some of the roles data owner, system owner, data custodian, whereas the GDPR defined roles like data controller and data processor. Data owner takes the primary decision regarding data, which includes classification of data and selecting the security baseline. System owner manages the system on which the sensitive data reside. Data custodian works on the behalf of data owner like administrator and data controller determines the purpose and method to process the personal data, whereas the data processor processes the data on the behalf of data controller. When the data no longer required for the original purpose, then we can perform data retention or data destruction. In data retention, we retain the data for a certain period of time for auditing compliance legal and reference purpose like log files or email correspondence. Now the data which is not retained or data after the retention period will be destroyed. The different methods are used for data destruction. Some of these are erasing, which is simply deleting the data, clearing, in which you override the data, degaussing, in which you use the magnetic field to remove the data from the hard disk drive, purging, in this we perform the multiple overwrite, and destruction, in this we use physical destruction method, like by cutting, using chemicals, or by burning the media. Among all these methods, these two methods make sure that there is no data remanence, there is no residual data left, and these two are the best approach for sanitizing media from sensitive data. So that's all for today. See you next time.